that you can move your patient. Okay, you have your walkie-talkies. Those are the ones that we really, really like. Okay, now, if I have a blind person, how am I going to move them and take them to my examiner? How am I going to do that? Either have them place their hand on the shoulder and have their hand yeah. placed on the shoulder. Okay? And then they follow you by that way. And you're going to instruct them. If uh, you have a person and he stands up and then he's limping, what are you going to do? Offer support. Offer support. I'm going to offer a wheelchair. Okay, that's going to be my first thing. Um, we're going to teach you how to get in and out of a wheelchair. We're going to teach you how to move uh, from a wheelchair to uh, the x-ray table and how to move a stretcher from stretcher to the bed. So we're going to go through an overview, and here is the, the main repurpose of a proper transfer is to safely get a patient from one place to the other, okay? Now, what they're doing in this picture right here is they have a patient that's in the bed, okay? You'll see this when they're changing sheets also, where you'll have two people that pull the patient towards them, and then the other person takes a rolled up sheet and puts it underneath them, and then they'll switch positions and then they'll move to the other side so they can spread the sheet to the other direction. So you'll see this a lot. Uh, you'll do this a lot because if your patient has an accident on their bed or their sheet, while they're in the department, clean it up. You know, go and get someone to help you. Don't have them lay in it and then transport them back to the emergency room or the floor, okay? So these techniques are all gonna be very important for us as technologists. Mom, continue the sheet with the need to see the patient as well. Yes. If I have a patient that's pooped on itself, I'm gonna put on the proper protective gear, and we're gonna show you how to do that, and I'm gonna clean my patient, okay? Uh, some facilities, you call their nurse, and those nurses will come down, but the majority of the time, you, your room is tied up because you're gonna keep them in your room to clean them, right? I'm not gonna put on smelling like doo-doo back in the waiting area, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and take care of them because if it was my mom or my grandmother, you know, you just don't do that. And it would be considered neglect if you It didn't. would be considered neglect. So whether you want to or not, it's expected of you, okay? And we, we are allowed to wear PPE and all that? Yeah, we have all that. Okay, it's cool. in all the rooms. Mr. Uh, Mr. Donnie, you told us about his uh, little story. Which one's that? The... Uh, Bayum. The, yeah, his BE exam, his first exam, was, oh. uh, was eventful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, could, it could be gagging. Yeah. But you got to do it. Gotta That's do what it. I'm going to be like. Okay. Now, my, whenever I started doing barium enemas, we didn't have disposable stuff. Okay. We, we had tips that we had to sterilize ourselves in the solution. Y'all are lucky. We had a can with barium in it and it would drain through a tube and into the rectum. So, and you couldn't put the, the can down because you had to reuse the can for the next patient. Things have changed. <laughs> So you went through this during orientation a little bit. You've heard it all of your life to use proper body mechanics because it will help reduce your injuries and your low back pain, okay? So back pain is the, the most common disability 
for people in their working years. Okay, I've had back surgery. Because of work, I didn't injure myself because of my work. But y'all got it easy now. Y'all got slide boards and all kinds of stuff. Okay, so. Oh, okay. Too soon. Don't yourself. Use your body, proper body mechanics. Okay? Make sure you have a wide stance and bend at your knee. Uh, you have your base support, you need to have your center of gravity, and your mobility will help with the stability muscles. Like me, at my age, if I start falling, I'm going to fall. Because I don't have the mobility that I used to, and if I stagger, if I stumble, I'm going to fall because I don't have the proper muscle tone, or should I say, flexibility that I had even 10 years ago. That's all changed. So you want to have a wide base. You want to stretch out your legs so it's comfortable, usually at the same level as your shoulders. And you're going to try to bend at the knee. Your base is support, so you've got your normal, and you've got your wide, and you've got your narrow. And those, those all have different occupations that they have. Like if I was throwing, um, what is that called? What they throw javelin. The javelin. The javelin. I'm going to have a, a further throw than if I were at a normal stance. I would never use a wide stance if I am trying to do ballet, because those are narrow stances. Narrow stances are unstable, and they uh, it affects your mobility. Wide stances uh, are stable systems. They help you with your stability. Here is like your center of gravity and your base support and your center of gravity. And here's just examples of what they, what they are. So am I going to be more stable with A or B? Mm -hmm. With B. Okay, with B. Your center of gravity is always at your pelvis. You want to keep things and you want to lift things no higher than your waist. That's going to help with your uh, your transfers that you're going to do. Okay, so if I have a patient and the bed's really high, I'm I'm pulling like this, right? Okay, but if I have a patient that is laying on a stretcher, I'm gonna lower the stretcher or the bed so I can pull like this, okay? Because here, I'm having to pull like this, okay? Mobility is found in the limbs and stability is found in the torso. You use mobility muscles for lifting and stability muscles for your support. That's probably why I'm not as agile as I am, because I have no abdominal. Ma'am, you said mobility is found in the? I'm sorry? You said mobility is found in the legs. The yeah. limbs. limbs. Mobility is found in my arms and legs. Stability comes from my core muscles. It comes from my back muscles. And I'm terrible with muscles. Heavy lift required. That's key. So 
when you have your patients, you're going to try to let them do as much as possible. Don't force them to do anything that they shouldn't do. Like if I have a patient and they are, I'm going to go ahead and say, pick up your right foot. Pick up your left foot. Hand me your left arm. Hand me your left hand. Hand me your, you know, let's try to move forward. Is it easier for you to take steps or shuffles? Okay. So we always want them to be as independent as they can. The less that we have to do for the patient, the better it's going to be for us. Uh, yes. So we pretty much let them do whatever they can comfortably. Correct. If they would have Correct. been uncomfortable, we can offer assistance, right? You can offer assistance, but remember last week when we had Mr. Fong? He was a good old man. Yeah. Okay? Uh, get away from me. Don't touch me. You know, let me do it on my own. My mother's getting that way. She's fixing to be 88. And, you know, I told you but the incident about Don't the, touch my dishes. just washing dishes. Let me do what I can do when I can do it. You know, I didn't realize just because I wanted to get the egg off the forks and the plate that I was offending her, but I was. So if something as simple as getting the eggs off of your dishes, can you imagine if you have a patient? But of course you always have those patients. They love to be sick. They love to be sick. They want you to do everything for them. Okay? What's that one thing where they like constantly want attention? I don't know. A hypochondriac? That's someone that uh, thinks they're always sick. But there is, a, there is something. I'm sorry? Is it Munchow? Yeah, Munchow is where, uh, like, uh, like you always think the other person is sick you know because you keep taking them to the doctor but it's it's all internalized like you see it with mothers okay when you have your patients you're also going to have uh, if they're inpatients you're going to have different colors of armbands okay Sometimes you might have four or five different armbands on your patients. So be sure when you uh, get into the hospital setting that you know those colors. Yes. Is the orange one universal? <laughs> uh, the yellow one is. Okay. The yellow one is always, always false. Okay. Okay. But they also have name alerts. Like say you have three people in the hospital and they all have the same name, they're going to get a name alert bracelet. Like, uh, yeah. you would really have to do the check too before? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, you have fall, you have drug interaction, you have penicillin uh, allergies, you have multiple uh, types of things that you're going to come across. Uh, you're going to have bands that say no blood pressure this arm oh. you know that type of thing like if i if my patient has a, a dialysis graft then there's going to be things telling the people not to do blood pressures on whichever arm i have my dialysis graft okay you always want to lift with your legs uh, you're going to avoid bending with your back Okay. How do you lift your legs now? Squats. Uh, squats. Okay. Like me, as I've gotten older and I have two replaced knees, I don't. I very seldom squat. You already see me trying to get up off the floor. I look like a two-year-old that's just learning how to walk because I can't bend my knees. Okay. When I bend over, I usually bend over like this because my the muscles in my legs are so weak. Okay. I never want to lift and turn at the same time. Okay. 
never lift and turn at the same time. Okay? If you don't feel safe, go and get help. Okay, if you don't feel safe, go and get help. Orthostatic hypotension. I stood up too fast. We've all done that, right? Mm -hmm. Especially after a night of drinking. Mm -hmm. The first time you get out of bed. Woo. Basically, it's low blood pressure that causes that uh, lightheadedness. I thought it was low iron. That makes That's sense. Like anemia. Iron? I don't mm -hmm. know about that. Mm -hmm. Like anemics? Uh, or yeah, anemics anemic. have the, the similar feeling? Yeah. Um, my mom actually like has a really bad. She can't stand up really quickly. She has to take it super methodical. Super slow. Every time. Yeah, and she's anemic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hadn't heard that, but it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, wheelchair transfers. Let's see what this is going to be like. Oops. Oh, it's not going to let me do it. You might have to. Like uh, highlight the whole thing and then right click it. It wouldn't do it for me. I think he's got lots of them. Today I'm going to reveal two types of protein that make your arthritis pain worse. If you have our. I thought that was the thing. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Justin with Therapy Rehab, and today we're going to be talking about transferring uh, your loved one, a, care, a caregiver transferring a patient, um, or just really picking something up. I mean, it, this really boils down to just being uh, having good body mechanics when you're lifting something. So um, today we're going to be talking specifically about um, the importance of uh, preparing yourself to transfer somebody, and then safely and effectively transferring somebody. Um, we're going to be transferring onto the mat table, then back over. Um, but we're talking really about a dependent transfer. This, so this is somebody that needs um, a maximum amount of assistance to be able to transfer from one surface to another. And we're going to be more importantly talking about how you can effectively transfer somebody without hurting your spine. So there's uh, really three different things that we want to avoid um, when you're transferring somebody, and that is um, we don't want to herniate a disc or we don't want a, bulge, a, a disc to be bulging from lifting, and we don't want to hurt the muscles surrounding our spine when we're transferring. Um, so there's really four main things that you want to watch out for when you're making this kind of transfer. And I'm going to talk about those real quick, and then I'm going to give you some even greater pointers um, that I've learned in the 10 years of doing this, um, just the things that I've picked up on um, from just transferring lots of different people with lots of different disabilities and, and the things that I've learned to help keep myself safe so that I could be doing this, um, you know, seven hours a day and transferring people and, and keeping myself um, safe in the, in the meantime. So, um, so the first thing that we want to watch out for and that, that everybody has heard but people have a hard time um, following is lift with your legs. Um, so your, your quads are going to be, your quads and your glutes are going to be two major muscle groups that can really help you um, leverage yourself and lift something, okay? So you want to avoid lifting with um, biceps, uh, your shoulders. Um, you really want to focus on the major muscle groups, the, the legs and the buttocks. So you should really feel those powering yourself up um, when you're going to transfer somebody. Um, the second thing that you want to avoid is um, jeopardizing your spine. So you want, we want to keep a nice straight spine. We don't want your spine to be flexed when, you're, when we're transferring. Um, another thing that we want to do is we want to keep the load nice and close to you. So when I say nice and close, I mean like if it, a lot of times what we do um, during these transfer trainings is I give somebody five pounds and I tell them to hold it out here. And I say, how long do you think you could hold five pounds out here? And usually it's a matter of a couple of minutes before someone would fatigue. Now I say, now bend your elbow and hold the load nice and close to you. How long do you think you could hold this? And the answer is usually, man, I could probably hold this for hours. Um, it's five pounds here and it's five pounds here, but all you've done is created the leverage for yourself. Now you've leveraged your positioning, you've leveraged the load in a way that you can support it. And that's exactly what we're gonna do when we're transferring somebody. We don't wanna be transferring all of their weight and we certainly don't wanna be transferring all their weight out here because then we really talk about those compressive forces on your spine. Um, you know, if we're really jeopardizing the spine, not lifting with our legs, 
and we're taking somebody way, way out here and trying to scoop them over to here, um, it's, it's just a matter of time before you hurt your spine. So if you follow these principles, you'll be a lot less likely to hurt your spine when you're transferring somebody. So let's get started. So the first thing that I want you guys to do is position the wheelchair in a, in a, in a place that it's gonna be ideal to transfer. Now, when we're positioning the wheelchair, I generally like to get the wheelchair at a 45 degree angle to the place that I'm, that I'm transferring. Super, so I really want important. this wheelchair to be at an optimal location to where we have to do less transferring. Notice so, you locked it. All right, so I've also locked both of the brakes. And then a lot of arms on wheelchairs will go back. And the reason that we want the, the we want to create as little a bit of, of, of a problem to be able to get over here as possible. So I don't want to be lifting over top of these arms. I really want to have these arms in a, in a location that they're out of the way and I'm doing as, as little bit of lifting as possible. Okay, so I'm just clearing the mat table. I don't want to have to, you know, pick her all the way up. I just want to clear enough to be able to get her over to the mat table. All right, so first I'm going to take the armrest off. Now this one has a button that you're gonna push in, and then it'll pull straight up. Some of them fold back, um, some of them come straight off, and the unfortunate amount of them will uh, not come off at all, in which case you're really having to transfer over top of it. So, um, so the next thing that we're gonna be doing is I'm going to try to scoot Christy a little bit forward so that I'm not having, so I have her in a more ideal location to where I can transfer over. So this one has really large wheels. I don't want to transfer her all the way over those wheels. So I'm going to scoot her buttocks forward so that I'm only having to clear the bottom part of this um, wheelchair. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take her legs straight up and I'm going to scoot her forward. And now I'm going to put her legs back on the ground and lock them in between my legs so her legs can't go through um, the other side. So now I'm taking Christy far forward and I like to be able to see where I'm transferring, so I have my head on her left side. That gives me the ability to see where we're gonna be going. So now I'm gonna get nice and close, and the first thing that I wanna do is check my spine. I don't want a round spine, I want a straight spine, and I'm gonna be pivoting on my right heel and my left toes. The second thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get her really far forward. This is gonna take all of her weight and put them through her feet and get it distributed closer to me. So we're gonna go on three and we're gonna pivot at the feet and I'm gonna be lifting with my legs. One, two, three, and then back over. Now you can actually still see my, my weight still on my left toes um, and, my, and my right heel. Now the way that I was able to do that transfer did not put any pressure on my spine and, and it kept Christy nice and safe. And that's how we wanna make sure that we're transferring patients. Or, loved ones. So the other thing is when we're going back to the wheelchair, I always make sure I have one arm secure so that we kind of have a stop point and I want to decrease the amount of space that I have to transfer back. Another good thing is when you're transferring somebody to make sure that the feet aren't going to be in the way uh, when we're coming over. So right now if I were to take Christy and transfer her, you can imagine her feet trying to follow and, and the amount of pressure that that would take onto the knees. So another good practice is to just bend, the, turn the, the feet a little bit while, before you transfer. So even that right there is gonna create a nice easy way for her feet to be able to transfer or slide over. All right, so now we're gonna be transferring Christy back to the wheelchair. And I'm gonna go over just a key, few key pointers um, to look out for that would be different. Typically when you're transferring to something um, that's lower than a wheelchair, it's gonna be a lot easier. But when you're going back um, to a wheelchair that might be higher than the surface you were just at, you really have to make sure that we're getting a little bit more, um, a little bit higher. So you need to do a little bit more work to get back to the wheelchair. Um, so I'm doing the same things. So I'm making sure that the wheelchair is nice and close to the mat table so that we're having to do less work to transfer over. I'm locking the brakes. And then I'm gonna kind of go through the same steps. I mean, she's in a point right now where she's nice and close to the edge of the mat table. We can safely get over to this wheelchair. Um, and I'm just gonna run through all the same points. I'm, I'm keeping my back straight. I'm not using my shoulders to lift, but I'm really just using, 
I'm really just securing her and then using my feet to lift, my, my thighs and my glutes. Um, and then we're gonna pivot over, not rotate over. So we're not rotating and extending our spine because those are the ways that we get those bulging and herniated discs along with pulled muscles. So we really wanna watch out for our posture when we're, when we're transferring back. So we're gonna do the same thing. I got her knees locked in between my knees. I got a nice straight back. I'm bent at the knees. And I got her nice and close to me. And again, I'm looking at where I'm transferring to. So we're going to come far forward. I'm getting all of her weight onto her feet. I can hold this for, for a pretty long time. I got all of her weight right now, and it's just going straight to her feet. And then we can nice and slowly pivot over and we go back. From here, I'm, I'm holding her. I'm putting the arm down. And now we've got a nice, good transfer back to the table. So if you guys have any questions, Please leave a, shoot me an email if you have any questions. My email is justin at therapitrehab.com. Feel free to call with any questions too. And hopefully you guys have learned something. Thank you. Okay, how do I get out of this? The bottom right. Hi guys, I'm Justin with Therapy Rehab and today we're gonna to be talking about transferring uh, your loved one, you might care, want to uh, caregiver transferring a patient. Um, or just really picking something up. I mean, it, this really boils down to just being, uh, yeah. having good body mechanics. Okay. Um, uh, Ms. Shepard, uh, one thing about the video, uh, I know like, I mean, my grandmother kind of toward the end, you know, she was kind of in a wheelchair for a little bit. And so, hey, being that close to her, you know, that wasn't a problem. Uh, being that, hey, you know, it is gonna be strangers and comfortable for them, comfortable for us. We'll be doing mostly what he does, but we'd probably be using that belt, I assume. I think no, there was a belt. We don't no? have the belts. Oh, we don't use the belt, okay. Yeah. So we would kind of be leaning yeah. in. But see how he said that put her legs between your legs? Mm -hmm. yes. I didn't do that. I okay. separated the legs and I would put my leg okay. in between their legs, mm -hmm. like this. And then I would grab them and then bring them and then swivel, okay? okay. Yeah, we don't, not, we don't have the belts. Okay. Then there's not one way of doing it. No, there's not. Mm -hmm. You're gonna do whatever's easiest for you. Smile more. Okay. Because a lot of times, what are you gonna do with those patients that are like stiff legs? You know, you're trying to get them from uh, the stretcher or the wheelchair in onto your table. You know, you've got to be very stable because they 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 won't be able to use their legs. So how am I going to do that? If I have a patient that comes to me and their legs are out stiff, straight out in front of you, how am I going to do that? Ask for help, and then we're going to lift them together. Okay, always position the patient to, uh, so he or she transfers towards the strong side. Okay, so if I have a, being on the x-ray table, the head is the head and the foot is the foot, right? But on the newer tables, you don't have to have the head and the foot. We have foot, uh, foot, rest that we have on the tables but those can be removed that's for the beds that have to go up and down for like gi studies and very enema studies but those foot rests come on so if i have a patient and their left leg is in like in one of those cages i'm gonna move i'm gonna put the head at the opposite end to work on it Ma'am, what do you mean by towards the strong side? The other leg is good, so that's the strong yeah. side. This leg is broken. That's the weak side. Okay, so that's my weak side. So I'm not gonna move the patient or my head this way, okay? I'm gonna move the patient where my head is this way. The strong leg is on the side. Yeah. Okay. not always possible but we try everything is okay foot rest foot rest always raise the foot rest to get on, on and off the, the thing and 
don't be like I did. My first job, I had an older lady. It was like 3 o'clock in the morning. And I thought she was in the, the, the wheelchair good. And so I put down the footrest, and it took the skin off the, her shin about that far. Okay? Because what I did is I just took my foot and I did the footrest, not realizing that her leg was not completely out of the way. Okay? What I should have done was get in front of her and lift her leg, put down the footrest, and stabilize that leg. Grab the other leg, stabilize, put down the footrest, and do that. But I didn't. I let her seat herself because she was mobile. But whenever she went to go get in the bed, I mean, into the stretcher, she put her legs back out so she could push herself into the chair a little bit faster. And I didn't give her enough time. So I had to pull, fill out an incident report. Because in our older population, uh, their skin is really, really thin. It's my first job, too. Mm -hmm. So I learned from that mistake. Okay, so the black wheelchair is going to be the best to maneuver our patients out of. Like you said, you can do the foot rest up and down. You can actually take the foot rest off if you need to. You can take the whole leg off if you want to. You can take away the armrest if you want to. The the blue one, you're just up the creek without a paddle. Okay, because you you can't use the machine the the machinery that they're in for to make your life easier. Okay, and nowadays, whenever I was in the hospital in June, remember I told you I was sick. You you wouldn't believe what the wheelchairs are like now. It was like oh my gosh, you know, that's amazing. Wish yeah. they would have had that whenever I was. Ma'am, what's the difference between the uh, blue and the black? What are they trying to compare? Nothing moves on the on the blue one. Mm. And how, is, how does that help, ma'am? Oh, yeah, it helps a lot. Because oh. I, if I have to lift my patient, I'm going to have to lift the patient up and over that armrest. I'm not going to be able to put my legs in between their legs because I've got to get the patient also over the footrest. And so that's not recommended. That uh, the blue one is. Not oh, but they're one. around. Believe me, they're around. Right. Okay, so you're going to have to learn by observing in the clinical setting how you maneuver those these patients. Okay, the one in the blue nightmare. <laughs> so, how safe do you think this is? <laughs> not very safe. Yeah. And am I going to be able to maneuver very much with my patient? No, the only thing I can do with this patient is lock and unlock the wheels. That's it. Everything else is going to be according to my body. Okay, there are four types of wheelchair transfers. Stand by assist. They're doing it on their own. Okay. Assisting standing pivot. A two-person lift, someone's got underneath the arms, someone's got underneath the legs, and a hydraulic lift. That's where you actually have a sling that you put your patient in and it lifts them automatically. Always use your teamwork. You always, when you're doing a transfer, put one person in charge. If you're the, if you're the one that asked for help, you're in charge. Okay, your help is not in charge, you are in charge. Okay. I'm gonna tell you what we're doing. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, I'll take the, the arms, you take the feet. On the count of three, we're going to lift. Also, if I have to do a complete lift, I'm going to have another person to move the wheelchair out of the way so I don't have to lift up or over anything. 
I have a third person to remove the wheelchair. And everything is according to what I am verbally telling my team. Make sure the wheelchair is locked at all times during any type of a transfer. It doesn't matter if you're transferring to a bed, make sure your bed is locked also. Okay? Your beds all have locks. Your stretchers all have, all have locks. If you don't know where how to operate your stretcher or your bed, ask for help. We're going to go to the lab this week, and I'm going to show you how to... Uh, we're going to practice some of this stuff in the lab because we have stretchers in there. Is it going to work? No. I'm not going to do that. Let's see what you need for that. Okay. If you struggle to lose weight, you must see this. <laughs> A fact dissolving loophole has just. I told him not to put that picture on. An important part of patient care is getting your room ready prior to getting your patient. Making sure a sheet and a pillow is available. That's going to make it easier. Lowering the table down. And adjusting your tube to where it needs to be. Question there. Should she wash all these things before bringing her to the table? No, I usually do all, all that in the room. Because everybody in the waiting room doesn't need to know your business. See how she's doing the foot rest? Make sure you wear your gloves. Notice how she's helping the patient lay down. Failure to assist the patient or to lock the wheelchair can cause a potential problem. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so always work your foot rest. rest. So with the standby assist, the patient is able to move on their own? Though. Correct. Okay. You want the patient to do as much as what they can do on their own. Now, obviously, if that foot was deformed, I would never have her hop to the table. 
would be one thing just by looking at that? What would have been one thing that would have made that perfect? If they would have had a sheet on the table that they could have switched it over. Because she was too close to the she was too close to the edge. But if I had a sheet, then, then they can pull. they can pull. Now, when you're doing those, you want your sheet to kind of be hanging off the edge of the table. That way you have something to grab hold of. Or if you need help, someone has a sheet to grab hold of. And you don't have to roll the patients. Hydro hydraulic lift, these are used for heavy patients. Oops, sorry. It's used for heavy patients and you need to learn, know how to operate the machinery before you use it. Every department that I know of has it. If not, they have one up on the floor. Uh, patients need to be sit seated on a lift sling before using this type of lift. So you're gonna have to put this underneath your patient so that way the machine can lift. Okay, sending a patient back to the ward to return sitting on a sling is better than risking injury. If you don't have help, send them away and bring them back. So this machine that lifts this is, is called is. a sling. It's called a sling. It locks the, the hammock hooks onto these hooks right here and then you can lift the patient up now you're going to use very slow methodical movement because you don't want your patient to swing okay if your patient is um, overactive uh, you have to keep them quiet uh, so that way they don't keep them <laughs> Does control clicking work? No, it's taking me to that Microsoft, uh, the home page, the wrap to sign in and all that. How does this weird stone bath mat help prevent I wish it did. Do you hate stepping out of the shower into a puddle of filthy bacteria? Soppy bath mats aren't just gross. They can be downright deep. <laughs> this is a hydraulic lift. Practice transfers often so that you become proficient at the task before you try to lift the resident. Practice lifts from the wheelchair chairs. Mm -hmm. And it's okay if you have it's one important. in your department Read and, and you're not doing anything, practice with each other. Safety is most important when performing lifts, and that includes your safety. Always use good body mechanics. Keep your center of gravity. Before performing the lift, engage the brake on the bed, and then lower the rail on the side that will be receiving the lift, and make sure that the bed is in a safe working height. A lot of those things now they push in. Close to the bed as possible. That way you don't have to work Engage the wheel locks on the wheelchair and move the front wings out of the way. Position the sling on the resident. One caregiver should stand in front of the wheelchair and the other should stand in back. Lean the resident forward in the chair, letting the caregiver in front support the resident's weight if needed. Slide the sling behind the resident with the smooth surface against the resident's body and the grab handles outside. The sling should be positioned between the top of the resident's head and the base of the spine. Make sure it is straight and parallel to the resident's shoulders. Push the bottom of the sling to the seat. Position the straps as far forward in the seat as possible. Lean the resident back in the wheelchair. Lift one of the resident's legs. Reach under and pull the sling out until it's just behind the resident's knee, about three inches. Repeat the procedure for the other leg. Position the lift so it's over the wheelchair. 
make sure the lift's legs are in the maximum open position for stability. Lock the lift's rear casters to prevent it from moving while you attach the sling. Turn the control valve on the hydraulic pump counterclockwise to lower the boom. Position the swivel bar so that it is parallel with the resident's shoulders. Then attach the sling. Attach the straps that are by the resident's legs to the front of the swivel bar. You can use any one of three techniques depending on the situation. You can attach them so that the straps go under both the resident's legs. This bundling technique creates a very small opening for petite residents. You can attach them so they cross between the resident's legs. This technique draws the resident's legs together. Or you can attach them so they go under the resident's legs directly to the swivel bar. This technique separates the resident's legs for hygiene tasks. Just make sure that you use the same color straps for both legs. Next, attach the center straps to the swivel bar using a loop that leaves a little slack in the strap. Use the same color loop on both sides. Securely attach the top straps to the swivel bar. Again, make sure you use the same color straps for both sides. Make sure the resident's arms are inside the sling. Unlock the rear casters. Turn the control valve clockwise. Then, give the unit a few pumps. This will elevate the swivel bar slightly and provide a bit of tension to the sling. Double check to make sure that all of the attachment points of the sling are properly attached to the swivel bar. If they are not, lower the sling and fix them. Pump the unit several more times until the resident is just above the wheelchair. The other caregiver can use the sling handles to maneuver the resident. Move the lift towards the bed and position the resident over the middle of the bed. Then rotate and position the resident properly above the bed. Lower the resident on the bed by turning the control valve counterclockwise. Once the resident's full weight is on the bed, lock the lift's rear casters and unhook the sling from the swivel bar. Unlock the rear casters, remove the lift, remove the sling. See why it needs practice? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so uh, will all of the slings and hydraulic lifts They're be all same? different. Okay. They all have the same principle, but they're different. Okay. Because it seemed like a dated video. If you suffer from bleeding gums, bad breath, cavities, decaying teeth, teeth, or any type of periodontal issue. Yes. And a hydraulic uh, lift. I would have thought it's for heavy patients. This patient was not so heavy. So but my, my husband was on dialysis. And whenever he got bad, he lost a leg. And the other leg, he couldn't use very well. It was so weak. So they had to use a hydraulic because he was in dialysis three days a week. So the, the, the two people and the patient is not, not so heavy. You cannot lift the patient. So, so uh, best to use the hydraulic. It's, it's best yeah. to use the hydraulic. And the, you're gonna, every case is different. Because obviously they're going to use it if the patient is no help. If the patient is no help. And then the, the thing is, they, they right. yeah, the thing is that they're, they're referring to the patient as patient as resident because if well, they're in a patient. nursing home. When they say a resident, that's usually a nursing. Home. Oh, I see. <laughs> so. Um, Essentially, whatever we deem it applicable or uh, just the most beneficial, we should use the hydraulic lift. If you have one available and you have time, mm -hmm. you can use the hydraulic. Now, what's going to be the easiest two person. or the quick one? The two person. So I'm thinking, like, would the hydraulic be, for, let's say a patient has a lot of, like, nerve pain, um, 
or if they then I'm gonna use the hydraulic. Yeah, like uh, if they've been in the bed for too long, the blood's been pooling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now you're going to, going to use your common sense. Okay. You're going to decide what you need. That like critical thinking. Like, okay, cool. One last question. Yeah. yeah. Why same color straps and do flowers? Because each strap does something different. Wait. Oh, I see. So that like one strap holds the upper part. One. So the upper part strap yeah, must yeah. match the upper yeah. part strap. Or oh, there might be different colors for different for different body parts. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. So you want to make sure is that one body, the machine is set up on one side the same as the other side. So you're going to do them both at the same time. You're never going to be doing this usually on your own. You're always going to have some. Uh, cart stretcher transfers. This That's from a stretcher to a stretcher, or a stretcher to a bed or a stretcher to an x-ray patient, okay? Always lock the stretcher before attempting any moving because they do move. You always want to cross the patient's arms across their chest because if not, they're, they're gonna do this to you or they're gonna pull your earrings out of your ears or break your neck. So for any transfer, should we just make it a good habit to cross their arms? Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. And if they have a hairy chest, I need for you to take off your shirt. Cross their hands and tie them or, or just yeah, cross them? Mm -hmm. Or you just tie them across the knees yeah. so that they can have it there. Uh -huh. And if they have bad breath, what am I going to do? Cool. Look at it. Look on the turn side. your turn your head to the left. Practice breathing through your nose. Because they're going to do anything you tell them to do. What? Just saying, practice breathing through your nose. Like, That's like, not you can't no. tell them that. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's easier to give them an instruction. Just turn your head to the left. Okay. Okay. So when you are moving from a stretcher to the X-ray table. Make sure that your table does this. It moves this way. Because if not, you've got a little lift like this. The bed, the tables, I don't know whether if they do now, but the table doesn't, the tabletop doesn't come out the same level as the controls under the table. So move it this way. Okay? And make sure they're at the same level so that way you can transfer. Am, am I done? This is it? Is it time? The class is over? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We're on slide 36. 36.